So this picture you see behind me, this is a result of approximately 250 hours of direct observations by the James Webb Space Telescope, part of a large survey by the James Webb that's actually meant as a kind of a general observer program. It doesn't have a specific purpose, but it's very similar to what Hubble did a few decades ago. Similar to the iconic ultra deep field. But here we only see approximately 10,000 galaxies. The image by the James Webb shows us at least three times as many. And this is just the first such image. It took less time to produce and it shows us so much more. And we now even have this very beautiful animation created by NASA that shows us a simulated flight to a now famous Macy's Galaxy, one of the most distant objects out there, named after the discoverer's daughter, Macy. This is at a distance of billions and billions of light years away from us, when the universe was only a few hundred million years old. Would that really dim dot that you see essentially being that unusual galaxy? And so, yeah, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to be discussing some of the recent updates from the James Webb Space Telescope, mostly focusing on more unusual and expected discoveries from the super super distant universe, some discoveries that still make no sense, but also some discoveries that sort of reveal things we kind of expected. And here is one such image, something that we knew we were going to find at some point. The image of earliest galactic collision ever found. This happened when the universe was about 500 million years old, intriguingly showing us two somewhat different galaxies. One is much bluer and contains a lot of young baby stars and a lot of star formation, whereas the other one seems to be red, contains a lot of dust and not a lot of new stars with one of the galaxies at least 10 million years younger than the other. And this discovery beats the previous record of galactic collision by at least 300 million years. But discovering galactic collisions so early on and possibly finding a lot of them was of course always expected. In some sense confirming a lot of cosmological theories when it comes to galactic evolution. But a much more exciting discovery of something that was expected but was still surprising is right here. With each circle representing one of 10 galaxies existing when the universe was about 830 million years old. Now why is this exciting? What are we possibly looking for? Well based on the current analysis, the conclusion here is that we're looking at one of the threads of the mysterious cosmic web, specifically a thread that's about 3 million light years in length and that seems to be connected to an ancient quasar, a galaxy with a very active supermassive black hole on the inside. Now the cosmic web by itself is a major prediction of a lot of modern theories, but it's not until the last few years that we actually started finding physical evidence for it in a lot of different images. There's at least one video in the description that explains some of this evidence in more detail. But in this case what it seems to show us is a filament that might eventually evolve into a massive galactic cluster with galaxies currently approaching one another along the filament itself possibly serving as a formation theory for various massive galactic clusters, such as the famous Coma Cluster. And so in this case, this is basically one of the earliest filamentary structures that seems to be directly associated with the ancient cosmic web. And it seems to be really thin and very long, as I mentioned, 3 million light years in length. So definitely a somewhat unusual discovery, even though technically, theoretically, it was predicted a long time ago. But in the last few months, some of the most exciting discoveries were really in regards to black holes. Pretty much every single week, dozens and dozens of new black holes have been revealed by new observations, with scientists now suggesting that we've discovered at least 10 times as many black holes as everyone expected compared to what we used to have a few years ago. Although in this case, we're only talking about really, really massive black holes, central black holes in various galaxies. So obviously black holes like this one that would form a quasar, or any other black hole that's usually referred to as an active galactic nucleus, AGN. And so why exactly there seems to be 10 times as many as everyone expected, that's the mystery for now. I think this study right here sort of summarizes everything in a lot of detail. But here are just some of these new images showing us each of these black holes at a relatively far away distance. They basically look like extremely bright infrared blobs but specifically blobs that seem to be different from the surrounding galaxy. And so the further analysis using spectroscopy can easily reveal if the brightness here comes from the black hole or from various stars in the galaxy. And so it looks like a lot of this superheated gas in many galaxies does come from these very powerful black holes. 
and intriguingly many different discoveries in the last few months involved a lot of record holders as well. The biggest story though is probably this, Sirius 1019, an extremely distant early galaxy that contains a relatively massive black hole in the center. Here the universe was only about 570 million years old. And strangely enough this galaxy appears as these three bright clumps, implying that it's still assembling itself and does not have a disk or any structure. It's also very likely forming stars really quickly, with the black hole growing fast as well at the same time. The total mass of the black hole is approximately 9 million solar masses, twice as massive as the one in the center of our own galaxy. And the reason this black hole is visible to us is probably because of some kind of a galactic collision that happened here relatively recently. And so strangely enough, the calculations here suggest that this black hole is growing at the fastest possible speed. It cannot possibly grow any faster. At least theoretically based on what we know about black holes. Which is of course why it's also so bright and so easily visible. But in terms of mass, it's not particularly massive when it comes to large black holes. Approximately two years ago, even before the James Webb, there was a discovery of a black hole that's about 1.6 billion solar masses, hundreds of times more massive than this one, when the universe was just 670 million years old. Now that discovery is still difficult to explain. It actually sort of violates what's known as the Eddington limit, suggesting that we just don't understand exactly how massive black holes form. A lot of these ideas are still based on somewhat outdated principles, and we even have some of the new discoveries that you can learn more about in the description that actually explain how certain massive black holes can form extremely quickly without breaking any rules. And so the discovery of these unusual black holes, though unusual, definitely does not break anything major. But intriguingly, even just a few weeks ago, there was a potential discovery of a massive black hole even farther away, redshift of about 12. With all of this hinting on the fact that some of the observations imply that our theories definitely need to be changed just a little bit. Not only do these black holes seem to grow to large sizes really quickly, there seem to be at least 10 times more of them discovered by the James Webb. And the most recent discovery was from the paper that you see right here, in regards to an extremely bright X-ray object known as UHZ-1. Here the redshift is approximately 10, so it's slightly closer to us, but it seems to represent some kind of a very unusual black hole, because it seems to lack certain signatures we expect from an active galactic nucleus. And one property that makes this black hole somewhat unusual is actually the fact that we don't see much. A lot of things seem to be hidden, which actually implies that there is quite a lot of dust present here that seems to hide a lot of the emissions. And the main conclusion in this paper is actually the fact that this might help us answer how these black holes become so massive. This idea is usually referred to as the seeding model, and these seeds can actually be anything. They could be really really massive stars, early stars such as population 3 stars, possibly thousands of solar masses in mass, or they could also be chunks of dark matter. But in this case, this particular galaxy has a really high chance of potentially answering many of these questions with many of these other black holes providing more evidence and more explanations for what exactly allowed them to become so big so quick. But we'll talk more about this once there are actually some answers. But then we have this other unusual mystery that really no one expected, coming from a barely visible galaxy at a redshift of 7. And here it was a discovery of carbon, specifically carbon-based molecules or carbon-rich dust grains. Ok, cool cool cool. Why does carbon matter though? Well, it's not why it matters, it's I guess when it matters. Some of these complex organic molecules technically should not exist yet. For example, in our own galaxy, the most common discovery of carbon molecules in most star forming regions involve what's known as PAH, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Something we usually find in the middle of various molecular clouds, something that we also associate with formation of planets and stars, and of course potentially complex life. It's usually found in various birthplaces for many different planets and stars, and it seems to be responsible for the evolution of various galaxies. Ironically, in astronomy it's also a bit of an issue. It absorbs a lot of wavelengths, and so it actually makes things a little bit difficult to observe if for example you're trying to look through the whole galaxy with a lot of these carbon molecules absorbing a lot of light. And so what's the big deal of discovering this with the James Webb? Well the thing is these complex organic molecules, these cyclical molecules, are not thought to have existed within the first billion years 
of the existence of the universe. We definitely had carbon, we just didn't have complex organic molecules yet. Modern chemistry predicts that it would take at least several hundred million years to potentially form even the simpler molecules. And so discovering polycyclic carbons in very early universe is definitely a bit mysterious. Naturally, this is where a lot of naysayers are going to start saying, maybe this means that the universe is actually much older, or the Big Bang never happened, and so on and so forth. But that's not the explanation that we currently have for this. As a matter of fact, the current explanation is way more intriguing, and it relies on a minute detail and extremely accurate measurements of certain frequencies. So basically here, it really depends on how this was found. And so in previous research, by looking at galaxies much closer to us, up to redshift of about 3, a lot of spectroscopic observations often observed similar molecules at a frequency of approximately 217.5 nanometers. So basically, if you see an absorption at this frequency, it's probably coming from various polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. But the observations from this particular galaxy were peaking at a wavelength of 226.3 nanometers, suggesting that this was maybe carbon-based, but not exactly what we expect it to be. Or that it was some kind of a carbon dust that used to exist here that didn't form the same complex molecules just yet. Essentially, early universe cosmic dust. Dust that could be easily produced by many different early stars, going supernova and forming early carbon that then mixed with oxygen and other elements to start forming extremely early organic compounds. And at the moment this is the most likely explanation, which also implies that the early universe had extremely different chemistry compared to anything we have today. It also implies that the planetary formation and star formation was probably somewhat different. We don't really know how different, just different. Although this particular wavelength could also be produced by something more simple. Maybe various graphite formations created by complex carbon without any organic molecules. So basically here we're looking at some kind of a super early complex carbon dust. Either way though, super exciting and something we're going to be discussing more once there is maybe some conclusion, some explanation, or additional observations from future studies. And then there was this, an actual physical observation of a collision of two neutron stars resulting in a powerful kilonova. Now by itself this is not the first time we've seen neutron star collision, but it's the first time it was seen by the James Webb, detected through a very powerful gamma ray burst that was seen in March of 2023. And the main discovery here was the detection of various very heavy elements, specifically 15 metals heavier than lead, whose existence before was a bit mysterious, but has now been attributed to a neutron star collision. For example, heavy elements like tellurium and various types of lanthanides. This was about 8.3 million light years away from planet Earth, but strangely enough, approximately 130,000 light years away from the nearest galaxy. So technically, this could have come from somewhere entirely different. Unfortunately, during this time, the gravitational detector LIGO was not operational, so we don't really have more details. But nevertheless, the discovery by itself is already pretty impressive. Especially because this is not even the first kilonova or supernova seen by the James Webb completely by accident. Here's another one that happened in 2022. And this one was surprisingly a result of a gravitational lens and located billions and billions of light years away. So I'm sure we'll be seeing more of these in the next few months. Looks like James Webb is just good at detecting everything at this point. Now naturally there were some other discoveries, including discoveries from our own galaxy, but we'll discuss this more in a separate video in the future. Specifically the discovery coming from this image of the strange object you see in the middle and the weird question mark you see right there. What is this? Huh, you'll find out soon. So subscribe, Share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Thank you so much for watching. And maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. It does have James Webb as one of the designs. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.